it's time for Buffalo to make that push. What is going on? It is Alex coming back at you with another video. And today I'm going to be taking a deep dive into the 2023 Buffalo Bills. If you guys are new, you guys know how to use YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. We're going to be picking up some momentum as we get into the regular season. Always stoked for that. And we're going to be having more content coming out almost every single day. I missed two days in the past month. Yeah, that's kind of crazy unbelievable in the off season but i love y'all i also love this series and i want to make sure i completed it this year and from now on we're going to be completing it every single year so you know what consistency is key that's exactly what we're doing let's get right into this we're going to be breaking down the depth chart starting out with the skilled positions going to the o-line then going through the d-line and the, the skilled position so quarterback josh allen he's not that good he's excellent he's great i love him josh allen is awesome because he gives so much fuel for these quarterbacks who are so toolsy when they're going into the draft process. Look what happens to Josh Allen. And this dude is the exception to the rule. He came into the league with a crazy and accurate arm. And you know what happened? He worked to change his mechanics because he's a great leader and he's somebody who's willing to work on himself. That's why I bond to Anthony Richardson. This man and Jalen Hurts. And Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, they're the reason I bought into Anthony Richardson because I see someone who's willing to work on their craft and when I see a solid foundation with a good leadership ability and someone who can take accountability and improve themselves, that's someone who I'm going to bet on 10 out of 10 times. Does it work 10 out of 10 times? No, it's an exception, not the rule. But Josh Allen proved that if someone really does want to work on themselves and they have all these physical traits, they can end up being really awesome. Obviously, he had some bad play last year due to his UCL sprain. That happens. It's a pain in the ass injury. I haven't had it myself. But all the sports orthopedics, including my brother-in-law, who is one, knows damn well that that is not a fun injury to play with. So definitely got to cut that guy some slack. Amazing player. He's obviously going to be well-deserving of an extreme contract for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Hopefully he lasts forever, honestly, because it's always fun to see some good football. Running back James Cook. I love James Cook. I still think that there should be a little bit more in that backfield. I think that the running back room might just be a little bit of the area of concern, in my opinion. Um, I have slot wide receiver Trent Sherfield. We'll talk about him in just a second. But honestly, I really like Trent Sherfield. Running back might be the area where I'm a little concerned about because I don't really see the lightning and the thunder the way I really would want to. But I'm getting nitpicky at best right there because it's a he's a good back. He's a really good back. I'm just getting really nitpicky. Wide receivers, though, uh, Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs. Awesome. Again, this is based off of our lads, the depth chart. So, you know, give me some slack. If there is a dude who's potentially not going to be starting at that point, please feel free to holler at me. Again, I got 32 teams. I'm going to be basing this off of, you know, the micro staying up with the beat writers is not something that is feasible for a one man operation here. But that's why I love y'all because you guys are going to be checking me and you guys are going to be giving me the information so I make better content for you guys. Feel free to call me out. Just don't be a dick about it. Bring back that phrase right back. But Trent Sherfield as well, he's a really fun wide receiver, three slash slot. And you look at behind him, you got Khalil Shakir as well, which a lot of people thought was going to be an absolute baller. But then you have Dalton Kincaid that could be playing a Travis Kelsey type role, could be working at the same time as Dawson Knox, and that might be a role for him. I love that pick too. I think Dalton Kincaid is going to be an absolute workhorse. And pretty much you looked at Kansas City, saw what Kelsey was doing and said, well, we can't really fully beat him in the offseason. So let's become them. Let's kind of emulate them. You like they hate us because they ain't us at that point, right? So you can't beat them, join them. That's what they did there with Dalton Kincaid. I uh, got to mention Naheem Hines, forgot to mention him. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't really think, again, that's going to get me out of my seat with um, the running back situation there. But Dawson Knox, another tight end that I really did like there at Ole Miss, good player for sure. Looking at the offensive line, I'll actually I'll mention Justin Shorter. He was, I believe, a six-round selection. He was one of my top 32 guys until he tested a little bit slower than what I thought. I he is listed actually as the uh, left wide receiver two on the team, which again, nothing's official. Okay. Let's not act like he's a definite wide receiver two on the left side, which would be like wide receiver three or four. But still, it doesn't look like he's down in the dumps of the projected depth chart. Uh, which is awesome because I fell in love with him. And if he ends up sticking to the roster, that's a huge, huge sign that, you know, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable with those guys who are more of the gems uh, down the line. I've had Alec Pierce in there and then uh, Justin Shorter. I can't really puff my chest out about Alec Pierce. So he was like a second round selection. Regardless, let's continue on 
with this one. Uh, tackle Deion Dawkins, very solid. I'm not going to complain about him. Connor McGovern, you know, honestly, I'm not going to complain about any interior offensive line help that this team can get. Mitch Morse, I actually like Mitch Morse. You got Ryan Bates right there, but you drafted Osiris Torrance in the second round, which is absolutely ridiculous value. So tip of my cap for you guys. That's one of the areas where I saw it in our lads. He's uh, right guard number two. I had, I actually was much lower on Osiris Torrance than most of the community, but I still thought that was a phenomenal pick. When you're able to draft one, a position of need, but also at a great position of value, it's just something that I really appreciate. And I'm never going to shame a team for going O-line. And this team definitely needs some extra infusion there. Spencer Brown was one of those guys who I didn't think was going to end up starting. I thought they were going to prioritize that right tackle there. I thought Anton Harrison was going to be the first round selection. Probably would have been the only guy I liked more than Dalton Kincaid at that spot. But, you know, Spencer Brown, he still tested out like a freak. He was like that 997 RAS dude there out of Northern, is it Northern Illinois? I believe so. So he still has all the feet, all like the features and all the statistical strengths and measurables that you're looking for. But uh, we got to see. We got to see because I don't think he's fully put it together, but he's a starting right tackle for a Super Bowl competitive team. I don't think that he's absolute crap, but. There's a reason why a lot of the community was saying they need to go and try to draft an offensive tackle. Next, we go to the defense. And um, starting out with the defensive line, you got Greg Rousseau there. Love him to death. Backed up by Shaq Lawson, uh, which is awesome. I love the defensive end depth on this team. And uh, we'll just mention Vaughn Miller as well as Leonard Floyd. You know, two really good veterans. And maybe they're not at the prime of their career, but they definitely are somebody who, I mean, they're both players who have still talent to give. And I think that's absolutely awesome. Got to tip my cap to them for that one. You got Daquan Jones, Ed Oliver in there. Ed Oliver was actually at the first, well, technically second, because I saw a TCU game earlier that day. Uh, but the second ever college football game I went to was actually SMU versus Houston when Derek King was still the quarterback. Ed Oliver sat out that game, or he might have been suspended in a game. I can't really remember off the top of my head. But that was a big bummer. But still, somebody where he was like one of the reasons why I first went to a college football game because I wanted to see him. Ended up not doing that. Ended up falling in love with Derek King instead. But, you know, that was also another reason why I went to SMU. So, you know, Ed Oliver has a place in my life, whether I whether he has an actual place in my life or not. You can debate that. But, you know, he has a little bit of sentimental value there for me. He's still a good player, has so much potential. So I hope that he continues to try to reach for that because we all knew how much or how good he could be. But yeah, Daquan Jones, really solid veteran there. Linebacker, you obviously lost Tremaine Edmonds, but you got Terrell Bernard, who was a third round pick over a year ago. And he's someone who I really, really like. He was an older prospect out of Baylor, but really fast, really dynamic. One of those dudes who I could definitely see end up being a superstar. And it's a reason why I still give this defense an A- minus, is because I think he's a very big sleeper. Terrell Bernard, somebody who I do think with Matt Milano's guidance could end up really kind of keeping the vacancy not felt that much, if not at all. So very excited to see that. Matt Milano, obviously a uh, very seasoned veteran on the team. You got Poyer and Micah. I'm 99% sure. Yeah, they're both on the team. So you have both of those dudes and you have Taylor Rapp on the squad. Forgot to mention Darius Williams. And he was, a, I believe, a third round selection as well. 6'1", 230 pound linebacker out of Tulane. So you guys do have some good young depth there at linebacker. Just there's not much proven outside of Matt Milano at the moment. Hence why I have to give it as the worst unit slash position. But uh, Taylor Rapp, you know, very, very good safety depth there. Then we look at the corners here. You got um, Tredavious White, who is obviously when healthy, one of the best. Kyra Elam, who I still have full faith in. He was my corner number two a little bit over a year ago above Derek Stingley. Of course, they're completely different players in my opinion, but you know, it's definitely a good spot. I think that he could continue ascending to be on that tier. And then you got Taron Johnson there, who's very good. You got Dane Jackson as well. Again, this is a really good team, really good team. So just keep your eye out for it. I just think that the the, the big wild card is the linebackers, which I am on the over about, but I have to, you know, temper my expectations there. Now let's go into the schedule. Yeah, 11 and 6 sounds a little bit crazy, but let's break it down game by game because it's a very, very tough schedule. So you start out New York. I'm going to give you guys that one. I think the Jet, uh, the Jets are going to have a little bit of trouble overall getting out the gate, but I think it's perfectly fine. Vegas is, you know, it's Vegas and Washington's Washington. You know, unfortunately, I if you guys really want more in-depth analysis, I mean, there could be a like Jimmy G comeback and 
you know, you could see some quick resurgence there. The Bills slip up early, but I doubt it. If I'm going to be honest, I doubt it. Washington, I just don't trust that Sam Howell's going to have enough games under his belt to really compete with a seasoned veteran. You know, Josh could be still healing up from that UCL. You never know. He could end up slipping up a game in there, but I doubt it. Um, and also Miami, I don't fully trust them to be consistent enough, but, you know, they are another formidable threat. I think they are a Super Bowl competitor when everybody is healthy. I think Tua might be the one thing that holds them back. And that's not saying that much because he's not really holding them back. But you go to Jacksonville. Actually, Jacksonville goes to you. And I love Jacksonville. I do. It, regardless of whether you won that game, it wouldn't have changed the outcome of where you guys are in the conference slash division. But I love Jacksonville this year with Dougie P in year two. That's definitely something I'm very excited for. New York was an overachieving roster that didn't get very much better. Um, New England, you know, that's a, I mean, Bill Belichick always knows what he's doing, but I just think right now you guys have such a good comparative or competitive advantage that there's just not going to be too much that they're going to be able to do. Uh, could end up being a little bit of a, like one that came out of nowhere, but I doubt it. Tampa Bay at home. I don't think I need to explain that very much. You're going to Cincinnati, you know, you're going to a Super Bowl competitors home. As you can see, you have only one loss at home and that's to Jacksonville. And that's a wild card game that I'm going to throw in there. Actually, I'm mistaken that Jacksonville game is in London. So Jacksonville essentially has a home game. Uh, I just remembered that out off the bat. So that's probably the reason why I gave it to Jacksonville. But you play Denver and New York at home. I think Denver is a good roster, but, you know, I think that you guys will have that home field advantage and can take advantage of that. I uh, still don't think New York has enough to fully compete with you, but that is a game that is up in the air. Uh, Philadelphia at Philadelphia, of course, like it's really not that far away. I, what, it's probably like a three hour, not even a three hour plane flight, probably like an hour or so plane flight away. So it's really short distance, but I think Philadelphia at home is just, I mean, Philadelphia is a juggernaut. Don't really need to explain that too much. Then you go to Kansas City. So you're going literally against the Super Bowl from last year in three weeks and you have one bye week, so the two teams you face. And you could pull a, like an upset in there, but again, you got to start leaning towards certain teams. And one team's going to win, one team's going to lose. And I'm going to choose the home team if they're that good, if that if the game is that close. Uh, you guys win versus Dallas at home. I don't think I need to explain that too much because one, Dallas seems to choke later on. RIP, pause. And um, also you're at home. So I think that the environmental changes going to be good enough to take the dub there. Then you go to Los Angeles, again, a Super Bowl competitor team at home. So I'm going to give that to them uh, versus New England. Already talked about that. And then you go to Miami. Miami just always knows how to put up a show at the end of the year. I'm sure that they're going to be trying to fight really hard with that with the Jets for that second spot. And, um, you know, they're going to be, well, I'm not going to spoil the record, but bottom line, they're going to be ha fighting for that last spot in the playoffs. So you know, they're going to be doing everything they can. I don't know if the Bills at that point will really need to do anything. So they honestly might rest their starters that game. And therefore, you guys still end off with the guaranteed W and the guaranteed um, playoff selection. So good for you guys. I still think that you guys are going to kick some ass regardless. It's a really tough AFC, but you guys are going to do you. You guys are do great. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the far side.